Fox, how are you doing? I hope that I find you all very well indeed and a warm welcome back to What's For Tea. I hope you're all having a fab day so far or if you're new, a warm welcome to you also. This is What's For Tea and my name is Cheryl. So this was the one that you guys voted for and this is going to be the second recipe from my new cookbook, The Best of Traditional Scottish Cooking. These are absolutely marvellous. We've just not long had these for tea and I just can't tell you how tasty these were and they're highly, highly recommended. I mean, they're really popular in this country for a good reasons. Whether you call them pasties, bridies, bakes or something else, you know, they'll always contain some form of meat and vegetables and sometimes even cheese and onion, which, you know, is always encased in some sort of buttery pastry, whether it's short crust pastry or whether it's puff pastry. But I actually prefer puff pastry when it comes to these you know these kind of things because the filling tends to be quite rich and heavy so I think the puff pastry works way much you know it's I just think it's way better than short crust so yeah so that's just my opinion so everything that I'm using will be listed in the description box below as usual yep so this is what I've got for you today so first thing I've got there is a couple of tablespoons of water. This is just for dampening your pastry at the end. I've got 112 grams of beef suet. If you can't find beef suet, shortening will do. Just make sure it's chilled and grated. I've also got some salt and pepper. I've got a pound of rump steak. I've got a couple of tablespoons of milk as well. And I'm going to be using shop-bought puff pastry. And I've also got two onions, which we're just going to finely dice. So that's it. Not many ingredients at all, but trust me, you're going to end up with something that's absolutely delicious. And this is the puff pastry that I'm using. Like I said, this is just shop bought and it makes this so much quicker and easier. If you want to see a puff pastry recipe, then I've done that many times. Just go and look at my past recipes. So the first thing we're going to do is chop our onions. Now I've got two here, but I ended up just using one and a half because these onions are actually quite big and I decided that I probably wouldn't need the two so I've just used one and a half large onions but you want to chop them quite small because these won't be getting fried you know prior to going into your pastry so you want to make sure they're going to cook and to that you just want to add your suet or shortening if you're using shortening now we're going to work on our beef so you want to just grab your beef and if you've got any fat on there just trim it off you're just looking for the lean meat and I just use my uh, meat scissors. I just use these scissors specifically for meat because it makes such a quick and easy job of this kind of thing. So I'm just cutting mine into strips and then I go back and then just cut them up again into wee bite-sized pieces. Again, you want these fairly small because these won't be getting cooked prior to going into your pastry. So everything is going into the oven in your pastry raw. So you want to keep it small just to make sure it cooks because everything's going to be packed into your pastry. So there's not going to be much wiggle room. Just discard any fat that you've got. So go back to your onions and your suet and pop your meat in the bowl as well. And you just want to give a wee shake of salt and pepper as much as you like or none at all, it's up to you. And you just want to make sure everything is thoroughly combined. So with a spoon, just go around and give it a really good mix in. You want to make sure your beef is well coated with your suet and it's all sticking together, you know, instead of being separate. So then you can go and grab your pastry. Just make sure you lift this out of the fridge 10 minutes before you're going to use it. Now, the recipe in the book calls for an oval shape. So I, I was going to use this cutter, but decided against it because, you know, it's round. So the only other oval thing I had <laughs> was the top of this grater, which actually worked out really well. So I'm looking for four. So this is perfect, actually. So I just grabbed a knife and cut round this. I just used this as a kind of template because I don't trust myself trying to do it freehand. So this was ideal. Now bear in mind guys, the mixture that you're going to be doing is going to be enough to make eight of these. So if you don't need eight, just half all of the quantities of your meat and your onions and your suet. So this is just what I'm looking for and the pastry is exactly the right thickness. 
So you just want to go ahead and, you know, plop a wee bit of your mixture in the middle. Or not, not quite the middle, more towards the end of your ovals. Because all we're going to do next is dampen round the edge and then flip the pastry over to make a wee sort of case. Just make sure you're not overfilling them guys because you don't want them bursting. So with my fingers I just went round with the cold water and dampened that edge a wee bit. You just want to flip your pastry over and line it up with the top and just press it down. And what I'm doing there, I'm just sort of pushing the, the you know, pushing the mixture back with my fingertips away from that edge, as you can see there. You just want to make sure your edge is firmly sealed. And just to be double sure, I'm going to grab a fork. And with the tines of my fork, I'm just going to go around the edge of my parcel and squeeze down lightly. You know, just to just to make sure it's not going to spring open in the oven. So I was really happy with this, given the fact I've never done these before, so I was super chuffed. So yeah, so that's number one done. Now I'm going to speed the next section up. Because just so, you know, I've shown you this one, so I don't need to show you the other three. So you're just doing exactly the same thing. Like I said, guys, just make sure you're not overfilling them. Because you don't want your pastry to break either. And it's quite thin, so if you overfill them, there's a good chance of that happening. I was quite happy with these. And the last thing you want to do is put a wee hole or a wee slit in the top of your pastry. That's just to let your steam escape. And what you want to do now is you want to refrigerate, refrigerate these for about half an hour or until you're going to use them. I pop mine in the fridge for half an hour. And the last thing we're going to do is glaze the top. Now, if you want a nice shiny top, use beaten egg. Or if you want to encourage browning like I do, I'm just using milk and that's going to give you a really lovely brown top. Or if you want a bit of both, use a bit of milk and a bit of egg. <laughs> I'm just using milk, like I said, I just want to encourage browning. Now, the last thing you want to do now is whack these into the oven. You want to put them in a high heat for 10 minutes. And these, that, I've put the temperatures on the screen for you to see. And then for 45 minutes, you want to turn the temperature down low. So they're getting about an hour all together. And this is what you're going to have at the end. It's quite important you turn the temperature down after 10 minutes because you want these cooking nice and slow and low. And you'll end up with something that's absolutely melting the mouth. I mean, look at this, it's lovely. The meat was beautiful and tender. The suet had melted into the pastry and the onions were lovely and tender. Oh, they were absolutely delicious. The suet does make a big, big difference. I've had pasties in the past made for me that, well, you know, they weren't made with suet and you can tell, you know, there's a big, big difference. So highly encourage you to put suet in your, pa in your pasties or your bridies or whatever you're making, so yeah. So all I'm going to do now is plate up. So we had mashed potato, some of us had baked beans and some had gravy and vegetables. So there's mashed potato and that's the pasty there. Baked beans, very simple but it works really well together. The combination of baked beans and mashed potato is a wonderful thing. So that's my mashed potato and I had some carrots. Again with the bridey or the pasty however you like to see it, with some gravy on top. Oh, I just love gravy. If there's pastry involved, I love gravy. <laughs> and this was me at the dinner table. I just wanted to show you inside again. I just, oh, I, I just wish you could have taste this, tasted this. I really do, because it was just one of the things. It was divine. So that's two recipes I've done now from that cookbook, guys. And do you know what? Two of The two of them have worked out so, so well. It's a marvellous cookbook and I can't wait to do the next thing now. So like I, like I showed you the other day, there are a fair few 
recipes in there that I'm going to be trying and I do want to do so I'll certainly get your input in some of them so yeah so thank you very much for popping along for this one guys and showing your support and coming back and having a wee look and mind and let me know if you're going to give it a go yourself and if you end up making in them and if you're on Instagram mind to tag me on Instagram or sh you know send me your pictures or show me your pictures because I'm always super chuffed and quite a few of you have done that now you know you'll get the wee notification on Instagram and then you'll go and have a look and you think oh that's so nice <laughs> And you're seeing how much you're enjoying the different bob bits and bobs. In fact, one of you had done the Becky of uh, Kabuki Clown. She had done, um, what is it, the broccoli and Stilton soup that I'd done a few weeks ago. She'd actually made that and she'd uh, sent me a picture. So yeah, I was super chuffed to see that. So that was it, guys. That was my super duper easy recipe and it is really easy. If you make, you know, if you use the shop bought pastry, it's super simple and you will not regret it so like i said guys thank you very much for popping over and checking out the recipe so until i see you next time mind to take care of yourselves and from our house in scotland to wherever you are in the world bye for now bye now <laughs>